Uh, but I still notice that whenever even I'm dealing with patients, they will still react with fear whenever we mention the word nuclear. Uh, and the issues of radiation have been mentioned. So what do you think that we can do as professionals to be able to shift uh, the narrative from fear to understanding and to more of understanding the value that nuclear can be able to bring for us? Thank Dr. you. Dr. Coffee, Dr. Curry. Mm -hmm. Question number three. Thank you. My name is Beth Mushi. I'm the Corporation Secretary and the Head of Legal at uh, the Regulators. That is Kenya Nuclear Regulatory Authority. Mine is not really a question but just to talk about the NEMA for the uh, NUPEA. So uh, we are a state corporation under the Ministry of Health, whereby our functions um, are stated in Section 6 of our Act, that is the Nuclear Regulatory Act. And the first one is to ensure the safe, secure, and peaceful use of nuclear uh, power. So whatever we do as a country, maybe ongoing and maybe the decision that will be made by government will ensure of the safety of this nuclear space. The second thing is also to ensure uh, we protect lives, uh, property and the environment. And the third thing, just what you asked, is on the safeguards. We mm -hmm. have in place, especially when you look at our act, the safeguards with regards to the siting, um, the construction of the plant and everything. So. I just wanted to point that out. Thank, Thank you. Wakil Makofi. That's very good. Then number four, who is uh, going to ask us a question before we go to the social media side? Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is John Opar, uh, a senior regulator at the Nuclear Regulatory Authority. Uh, I'll put it maybe as a question in terms of uh, the role that NUPEA has in strengthening the regulatory and legal framework. Uh, uh, CEO, you've mentioned that uh, one of the infrastructure issues that are required for a country to develop at the preparatory stages a robust, uh, safe nuclear uh, infrastructure is the regulator and the legal framework. It is true, like Madam Sears has said, Kendra was established in 2020. Do you feel that what has been done with the regulator and regulations is sufficient or do you feel that there is still opportunity to strengthen and uh, make robust the regulatory and legal framework as we draw nearer and nearer uh, within the milestone approach? Thank you. Thank you. Over to you. Okay, thank you very much uh, for those questions uh, by uh, Engineer Flora, Dr. Itotia, uh, Madam C, and uh, Mr. Opar. I'll start uh, with the issue of capacity building. Yes, um, one of the things that a country must do is to ensure that they have enough skilled workforce that will manage the nuclear power program. And indeed, NUPEA is undertaking that role. What we've do been doing so far is that we've been identifying competent Kenyans and taking them abroad to China, to Korea, to the US, to Canada, uh, to all these countries with this nuclear technology for them to learn firsthand. Uh, and we've qu developed quite a number of Kenyans. Uh, so far, we are talking about numbers close to 70 individuals. Mm. But we need more. Uh, and we cannot be able to always take them out. What we are going to do is that we are now trying to work with the national institutions, national mm -hmm. academic institutions, mm -hmm. that's universities and polytechnics, mm -hmm. so that we can be able to develop that training here. And that is work in earnest. Uh, going to Dr. Itotia, yes, I know that there's a lot of fear about radiation. Uh, and that has been created by probably the first uh, usages of nuclear for war purposes. But under international law, nuclear technology is not supposed to be used for war purposes, but for peaceful purposes. I think what we can do as professionals is to engage more in stakeholder engagement so that we can uh, remove fear from our people so that they can know that nuclear technology is available for peaceful uses. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Mushi, uh, about what you talked about, uh, the role of the regulator. And indeed, the regulator plays a very important role. 
the existence of a regulator is a confirmation that the government of Kenya is very interested in ensuring that the nuclear technology shall be applied in a safe and secure manner. Uh, on doc, uh, uh, Mr. Opal's question about uh, the need for strengthening the, the, the regulations, I agree with you that it is very important that we continue to work at the work to ensure that as we get closer to having to start constructing the first nuclear program, we should have a robust regulatory framework. And indeed, it is part of NUPEA's role to work with the regulator and uh, the Kenyan parliament and all the other stakeholders to ensure that we have a strong legal and regulatory framework to support the nuclear program. Thank you very much. Well, Makofi, Makofi, Makofi. <laughs> we are still in the program of Semana Sports. Bonga Nagava. Semana Sports. Bonga Nagava. Now let's turn to the other side and hear what we have from the social. Over to you, uh, engineer. Thank you very much. Sema Naspox, Bonga Nagava. Question number one comes from someone called Peter Mbogwa uh, on Twitter. He's asking, why is Kenya pursuing nuclear energy while other countries are facing it out? That's question number one. Question number two comes from engineer Belden Dubi member on Twitter from Mombasa. He's asking, when is Kenya expected to commission its first nuclear power plant? Question number three. Will the nuclear program create jobs for Kenyans? That comes from Omondi Abraham Christopher from Kiliti County. Question number four, five. Is, is nuclear energy cost effective compared to other sources? That is from engineer Brian Ogechi on Twitter from Homa Bay. Lastly, what safety measures are, play, uh, are in place for Kenya's nuclear program? That's a question come from Eugene, Eugene Marwa from Gong on TikTok. Lastly, a question from an electrical engineering student at uh, the Technical University of Kenya called uh, Lynn Jeptumo. She's asking, how much electricity can an, a nuclear plant generate? Thank you. Back to you. So those are so many questions. The, the irony of it is that most of them are from engineers, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so uh, it's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's a mixture of lawyers and engineers. Yes, no? yes, right? yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, yes, so yes. we have time to ski a bit of the Tuambia. Now, as an tuta to the Taja Commission in Lini, you're your daughter, the Wizard Hapa. Yes. Asante Sana. I'm going to do the story, the story, the story. So I'm going to go to the Sema and I spoke like me. Kenya's nuclear program is as real as, uh, as the sun rises from the eastern sets in the west yeah, yeah. because it was conceptualized uh, in 2010 and we've been doing quite a lot. According to Kenya's uh, uh, energy plan, the least cost power development plan, mm -hmm. nuclear is set to to come on board in 2034. 2034. Yes. Okay. Today, as we speak, I'm sure we, we see the, the number of times we have load shedding in our country and blackouts. Mm -hmm. And uh, we must recognize that Kenya is a net importer of ele electricity. We are buying electricity from uh, Ethiopia and, and, and Uganda. Mm -hmm. We want to be self-reliant in terms of, uh, of our energy needs and so as to guarantee that we have reliable, safe, secure, and affordable power. And therefore, the 2034 debt is something that we, the government is working at earnestly to ensure that we meet it. So we hope to start construction in 2027 and uh, the president to be able to, to commission the first nuclear power plant in 2034. Uh, then there's the question about why nuclear. Mm -hmm. I think that is a very important question. And uh, it's a real question that we need to interrogate. We have solar, wind, hydro, and, and, and geothermal, and those are very beautiful sources of energy, mm -hmm. clean, and, and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. But we are saying that we want to industrialize as a country. Mm -hmm. We need base load, power that can support our industrialization aspirations. Mm -hmm. And therefore, nuclear comes in to really meet that requirement. We must remember that we are in the age of climate change. When a government spokesman, we might wake up one day and find a river that has been running for many years, running dry, and probably it was one that was running our, 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 our plants. Mm -hmm. We must be very cautious and, and plan for the future so that 
we are not surprised. Actually, that's true because the river that I used to fetch water when I was small, Roiro River, yes. although people call me Modongo or Roiro, it's actually true, mm. it has actually shrunk. It's now a stream. It's yes. really becoming smaller and smaller as, as days go by. Yes. Mm. And, and, and therefore, we have to have an, a source that we are much more in charge of. Mm. We know that uh, wind and, 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 and solar are intermittent. They cannot support serious industrialization. Okay. And therefore, we need uh, that. We need nuclear. So nuclear is more consistent? Nuclear is very consistent. Mm. But you people still feel about, they fear about the Chernobyl you know, accident, the, the Hirosh Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Yes, yeah, they, they, they linger. Hiroshima and Nagasaki were not accidents. Those mm. were uh, uh, deliberate use of nuclear technology mm. for destruction and, 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 and killing mm -hmm. in a worse scenario. Mm -hmm. But as I've mentioned, today's uh, we have an international treaty which requires that all countries with nuclear arsenal mm. should undertake disarmament. Okay. So that the countries with nuclear weapons are supposed to start to be destroying them. And those that don't have nuclear arms are not supposed to pursue development of nuclear weapons mm. at all. Mm. So the only mandate that countries can do with nuclear is for peaceful uses. Mm. And therefore, uh, uh, in regards to accidents, yes, we had an accident in Chernobyl, mm -hmm. but that, as, as has been pointed out, it was an accident. Mm -hmm. And because of what was learned from that accident, mm -hmm. the current technology has addressed the things that led to that, uh, that accident, and it, 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 it's not likely to happen Very again. Good. Very good. Uh, Thank you very much. And um, when it comes to uh, the cost of uh, nuclear power, is it cost effective? Mm -hmm. Yes, nuclear is cost effective. Mm -hmm. But we must say this, that nuclear, I like comparing nuclear to like if you buy a plane. Yeah, yeah. A plane is very expensive at the beginning, but a plane will take you to far places at a cost uh, a, a costly price. Mm -hmm. For example, if you were to go from here to New York, mm -hmm. would you rather go by a bicycle or a, or, or, or a car or, or will you go with a plane? The mm -hmm. plane will easily take you there in a shorter time mm -hmm. and you will be able to do your things. Mm -hmm. The same thing with nuclear. Nuclear is expensive at the beginning. Mm -hmm. the, co the, capital, the initial capital cost is very expensive. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about, about a project that is going to serve you for about 80 to 100 years. Yeah, yeah. Yet, this is a project ca that is able to repay itself within 15 to 17 years. Mm -hmm. So that the remainder of the years, mm -hmm. it's a bonus, a, a bonus uh, project. Okay. And the operational and maintenance cost for a nuclear power program is very, very low compared to other sources. Okay. Therefore, when you look at it, you find that most other sources, some of the best, best that we have, like uh, geothermal, mm -hmm. are going to give us electricity at, uh, at 13 cents per kilo hour. Mm -hmm. But nuclear, when you do uh, an analysis, mm -hmm. is going to give you at about 8 cents per kilo hour. So it's much, much cheaper. It's much, much cheaper yes, yes. And what in, about electricity? In, in the long term. And it will give you steady, stable supply. supply. What about electricity? How much do we get per kilo hour? You will get... The, the, the amount that you require at, uh, is stable. Mm. As in, you don't, it, it doesn't go no up blackouts. and down. Yes, yes exactly. No like yes. Load yeah. shedding. Yes, yeah. there's no load, load shedding. Mm -hmm. So it is really a reliable. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's like when you're doing um, uh, rain fed agriculture mm -hmm. and, and, and irrigation agriculture. Yeah, yeah. When you're doing irrigation agriculture, mm. you, you, don't, you, you don't go sleeping and just hoping. Mm. You know that you, you will have water. provided the, the plants with the water that they require yes, yes. and they will grow. But mm -hmm. when, you, when you're only depending on the rain, mm -hmm. if there's a drought, mm -hmm. then you, 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 you're likely not to, mm -hmm. to have a harvest. Okay. But with nuclear, you will get what you expect at all times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wonderful. I think that's a very, very insightful you know, uh, moment. So just maybe in a nutshell, tell us, uh, Nupea, where are we in terms of the strategic plan implementation? in terms of your own internal capacity, in terms of opportunities that maybe young people may want to benefit from? What, 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 do, we have, what do we have in there? Yes, uh, NUPEA, as I've mentioned, we are at uh, a stage where we are about to move on to the critical stage of construction. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we get to construction, mm -hmm. nuclear projects employ upwards of 10,000 people directly. 10,000 During people. construction. Okay. And those are many Why numbers. Why are you on the jobs qua ground? You're on the jobs direct. Okay. 
and we're not talking those are direct jobs tuko na mpango wa jobs kwa ground mm -hmm. eh, kazi kwa ground yeah. kazi kwa mtandaoni na kazi majuu so yes. hizi ni kazi kwa ground 10k tunakuja tu hivi pub yes au engineer wote ambao wako hapa wanapata nini eh yeah, wanapata yeah. job eh yes. na kwanza naona siju kama siku hizi tumezaeka lakini mamanzi naona ndio wamenuka kwa hiyo maneno bana <laughs> eh eh <laughs> Uh -huh. And of course, mm. you expect that those people will, will, will work on the, on, on the plans will need accommodation. Yes, please. So the landlords are going to get jobs. Mm -hmm. Those people will need food. Mm -hmm. They will need transport. Yes. So there are all, th all those indirect jobs that are, are going to be created. Yes, yes. So there are very many, many other jobs that are created. Mm -hmm. And a nuclear project also will ensure that we have Kenyans that are highly skilled and can work anywhere in the world. I see. You know, an engineer who is trained to work in a nuclear plant can mm -hmm. work anywhere because the level of skilling that they get mm -hmm. is really the kind of skills that can can get you employed anywhere okay uh, we are also talking about the other uh, benefits that will come by that mm -hmm. because with having affordable reliable stable energy we'll have industries that will do commodities value addition yes. and support the idea of uh, uh, creating a, a foreign exchange balance for mm -hmm. our country mm -hmm. so that we will be exporting finished products mm -hmm. and not always importing uh, ex exporting raw materials and importing finished products mm -hmm. that uh, causes us to spend more dollars outside so, so t t tell us about nuclear as you as you conclude now yeah. uh, nuclear and medicine because mm -hmm. uh, you know we are talking about the eff negative effects but how does it help medicine maybe you can go deeper into that yes nuclear mm -hmm. nuclear and medicine is very important mm -hmm. first and foremost uh, we've already pointed out that it is used in the in the in the treatment of cancer okay yeah and uh, also it is used in 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 treating malnourished mal malnourished children okay but also in the I if we use nuclear technology in agriculture mm. we will ensure that we have crops that have good nutrients that will support the right health for our mm. people mm. so that the crops that are being grown and produced mm. uh, uh, have the right nut nutritional value. Mm -hmm. And we're also talking about the idea of ensuring that we are controlling our post-harvest losses mm -hmm. through using nuclear technology in a process known as food irradiation. Okay, okay. Through the process of food irradiation, mm -hmm. you are able to kill pests and diseases mm -hmm. in our harvest so that they they are not destroyed by pests. Very interesting. And you must remember that uh, a lot of the international market is now frowning upon crops uh, that are treated using chemicals. Yes, that's true. So with nu nuclear technology, mm -hmm. we are able to sort out that problem so as well. So thank you very much for all of that. Very good information that uh, really we didn't have, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that yeah. we are learning a lot. Now, mm -hmm. giving, us, giving, us, give, giving us your closing remarks, maybe your, your final thoughts, your punchline, mm -hmm. what do you have to tell us? And then after that, we'll stand with you here. Yeah. And, and we'll do something together as we face the camera. Yes, mm. I think nuclear is the future mm. and uh, our government has been a very strong supporter of this uh, project. Mm. The president has been a strong promoter of the program. Uh, when he was the deputy president, he hosted an international uh, uh, nuclear conference. Mm. And uh, we actually need that kind of support because for a nuclear program to progress, there's something we call national position. We need a, a strong pronouncement from the His Excellency so that international partners that we're going to work with mm -hmm. can generate the necessary confidence mm -hmm. to be able to work with us in this journey. Mm -hmm. As we speak, we have MOUs with the United States of America. Mm -hmm. We have an MOU with China, and we are also developing an MOU with Korea, which are some of the leading countries that export nuclear technology. With a, state, a bold statement from the presidency, mm -hmm. those development partners will be able to work with us in confidence mm -hmm. because the development of this program is capital intensive mm -hmm. and will need development partners. Once we have that mm -hmm. statement from high up there, mm -hmm. these development partners could, should be able to put capital on the table. Thank you very much. Let's clap for our guest. Thank you very much. Stand with me here now. Look at the camera there. Then you say, Mimi ni Kenya Mzalendo, Jay Wewe, three times. And then you finish with Daima, okay? One, two, three. Mimi ni Kenya Mzalendo, Jay Wewe. Mimi ni Kenya Mzalendo, Jay Wewe. Mimi ni Kenya Mzalendo, Daima. Thank you.